Five top tips for Scrum Masters Agile coaches to finish the year strong. We already in November and the year is fast closing. The market is up. It's an opportunity for you to step in there strong, but you also need to understand what the market is demanding at this period, right? For instance, uh, if you're getting on an interview now, a couple of questions which you're going to expect would be more on how to fix broken implementation of Agile, right? Many uh, companies are closing the year, they're kind of re-evaluating, they're looking at what they can do better next year. So when you have an interview now, it's going to be like, okay, what can we do to increase velocity? What happened when this is not working? So you're going to expect a lot of those questions. But then for you to be able to get to the space where you even have the chance to get interviews, there are a couple of things you need to do. And we want to talk about five things you should be doing now if you want to close the year with an offer. There is so much, so many opportunity to end 2022 strong as a scrum master and i know you've been dreaming about that it's possible it's possible forget about whatsoever is telling you what about the market i'm going to share five things that if you're able to do before the end of this year trust me you put yourself in the right footing the first one which i'm going to talk about is the mindset a lot of people don't really pay attention to the their mindset which i'm going to talk about that it's the first thing many people need to reset. Now, the second is you understanding Scrum. A lot of you understand Scrum. It's like, oh, I understand Scrum. I'm ready for the market, but I don't know why interviews are not coming, right? So we're going to talk about that as well. Now, the third thing I want to talk about today is um, master your resume and LinkedIn. I also talk about some tips on resume and LinkedIn. And the fourth thing I want to talk about today, leverage the power of case study. That's where a lot of people are missing. The gap is missing. And yeah, I'm going to talk about the difference uh, you create when you do, uh, practice on your own. It's like, oh, I've been doing a lot of self-studies. I've been watching a lot of videos. I'm going to kind of show you uh, why if you've been watching video for a long time you can answer all the questions and you feel like oh i'm going to the second third fourth phase of interview i'm not making it we are going to decode that today and last one which is my masterpiece my masterpiece which is the reason why you need to walk, watch the end right we put the masterpiece for those who want to stay and get the viral info the act the master the act of interviewing all right Interviewing is not about answering questions. It's not about me asking you a question and you saying the right thing. There's more in-depth into the act of interviewing beyond what you might know. And we are going to crush all of this in this session. I'm going to make sure I keep it less than 20 minutes maximum, but I'll go as in-depth as much as possible so that you get what you need to know. All right. Before we go ahead, a couple of tips for those who want to be Come uh, certified safe scrum master. Our next training is coming up next Monday. That's going to be the 14th of November. And for this powerful session, anyone that kind of invest to come into any of our training, they can tell you the price and the value. You can compare it, right? So if you want to be part of that training or if you just looking forward to be a Scrum Master within 90 days. Hit us up and we are going to help you to close that gap. Not just a Scrum Master, but being someone who understands the in and out of what they want to do. Okay, so uh, let's get straight into our conversation today without wasting much time. You always know where to find me. I'll check the description. You have my number. And of course, we have some special end of year discount we're offering. So you can always reach out and say, hey, I want that special end of year discount. We are uh, running that now. If you check also on the link, you'll be able to access most of those discounts as well. If not, send me a text. I should be able to shoot you a quick message to say, hey, this is where you can find what you need to find. All right. But I always say, hey, one of the things you don't want to do, uh, probably don't just get a phone and call me like, oh, do you have a mate? Call me back. Now, so long as I want to have a conversation with you, you also want to understand, which is also what I advise everybody, we need to maximize a lot of time. 
there is no need getting on the phone to talk 15 minutes with you when I can share maybe a five minute video that answer all your question and you ask the relevant question, right? What you need is information, not just talking to me. And now when you look at the information and then you have further questions, we can always talk about that because you already know what you want. Okay, without wasting much time, let's get into our five tips. Number one, the mindset. Now for you to end 2022 strong as a Scrum Master, you are still in the market. The first thing you need is the mindset. That a lot of people are applying and they're hoping to get interview, but their mindset is stopping them from getting interview. So the first thing, which is very important, not just when you're looking for a job, but in any environment is that if your mind cannot get it, you cannot get it. If your mind cannot get it, you cannot get it. And the first point of mindset, it's about how do you translate the way you think into reality? If you spend your time listening to recruiters that probably are calling and the interviews are not forthcoming, it's like, oh, all of these recruiters, they're calling and nothing is forthcoming. I don't know what's going on. It's becoming very challenging. Okay. What you're trying to see is that you're telling yourself that because it's challenging, I cannot get it. Now, you need to have a mind that breaks through all of those limitations. The reason the Scrum Master look, uh, market look a bit more challenging now is because we thought we're just getting it like, oh, first interview, oh, I'm a Scrum Master. If it was that easy, right, it wouldn't be a six-figure job, trust me. The reason we need to go through processes and processes and processes is because there need to be some value created. Anything that comes with value needs you to invest. And trust me, it's not because you know or you don't know. Sometimes no matter how you know, you still need to go through the process. So the first thing is that you need to set up your mind to say, you know what? I either win or I win. There is no quitting. And now when you set up that mind, which is preparing your mind, the next thing you do is that you start evaluating. You remember one of the key goals or one of the strength of Agile or Scrum is relentless improvement, retrospective. Why do they set retrospective at the end of every spring or iteration? Because there's always something to learn. But it's so surprising that we learn that process, but we don't implement it. Someone is going to be in the job market for six months. They're doing the same thing. It's not working. They keep doing the same thing. And they expect to see different results. So if you have done it once, twice, it's not working, stop it. Get to something different. If you can do it on your own, if you and most especially for those who have gone through the maximum number of interviews, if you're on your own, Right. If you don't have a coach, you're just doing it on your own. The maximum number of interviews you should get is 10. If after 10 interviews, you cannot get it, go hire a coach. That's as simple as that. Now, if you have a coach, the maximum number of interviews you should go through is five. If you go through five interviews and you don't make it, change your coach or change yourself. The two things that are happening. Now, one thing is not just about having a coach. Now, when some people have a coach, they feel like the coach is going to do everything for them, right? I'm just going to sit back, relax. Oh, coach, I have this uh, uh, question from the recruiter. Please, can you answer them for me? I want to make sure I don't make a mistake. Okay, yes, I can answer them for you, but I might have one interviewing for you. So now the value of a coach is not to do things for you. The value of a coach is to guide you how to do things. People who come through our community get out as coaches. By the time they even start going through their final phase of interview, we are already training them as coaches. So when they get on their team, they're creating so much value in such a way that they are getting to the next position in less than no time. Why? The mindset. The way we train you to think. And this is why when some people come into our community, after evaluating where they are, they will understand that, okay, I still need to do. Now, one of the first thing I do for every person that says, oh, you know what? I've been having a lot of interviews and there's no result. I'm frustrated. I'm like, okay, 
Can I ask you a couple of questions? I want to see if you're really ready for the market or not. And one of my first questions I always ask, which if you can answer this question correctly, it means that you've not even started. It doesn't matter how many certifications you have. Can you effectively send me all the Scrum events in their order? And can you tell me exactly when you're going to plan that in your calendar? Let's say if I give you a calendar now. I say plan the spring planning, backlog refinement, daily standard, backlog grooming meetings. And if you're in a safe environment, we're looking at also the Scrum of uh, Scrum. We're looking at uh, the PI. How are you going to structure that in a calendar? And can you effectively explain what is your role as a Scrum Master in all of these events? That's number one question, which if you cannot answer that, go back to the drawing board. There's no need for you taking an interview, right? Now, the second question I always ask them, if you pass that one, good, one step ahead. The second question I always ask, can you tell me your role as a Scrum Master in your last two positions, pointing specifically what is the product you were working on and what are the key features that you have to deliver as a scrum master if you can validate that you're good to go now the last question which are three main questions which if you can understand this three main question then you can already start kind of say you know what i think i'm ready in the market i'm ready for the market is can you Tell me how you can manage performance of a team or how you can improve performance or you can help a team up, up their performance. Now, you're probably surprised that in of this question, there's no tell me about yourself. Why? Because tell me about yourself is the combination of you understanding Scrum event, understanding your role as a Scrum Master and understanding what you were working on as Scrum Master. That's just how we made. When we say, tell me about yourself, it's about give me an idea of where you're coming from, give me an idea of your experience as a Scrum Master, and give me an idea of an achievement you have, uh, um, you have acquired as a Scrum Master. If you're not close to any of this, then you need me. You need to come to my community to learn, right? Okay, the second thing I want to talk about today is understanding Scrum, which is what I just explained. Now, if you're unable to understand what Scrum is about, not just like, oh, as a Scrum Master, I have facilitated event and remove impediments, that is an integral part of Scrum. But Scrum is not about facilitating events and removing impediments, which is why most of the uh, people who have been in recent interview today, they're going to ask you the question, apart from facilitating event and removing impediment. Can you tell me your role as Scrum Master? Why? Because they want to see that you understand that Scrum is not all about event and impediment. Do you facilitate event and remove impediment? Yes. Is that all you do as a Scrum Master? No. As a Scrum Master, you are part of a team that is delivering value incrementally to the customer. So what the reason for you facilitating event and removing impediment is because you need to deliver value to the customer. So if you've ever asked in less than a minute, can you tell me about your role as a Scrum Master, don't start with, oh, I'm removing impediment of a certain meeting. Now, okay, as a Scrum Master, my goal is to understand the product that needs to be delivered to the client and how I can support the delivery of that product using agile delivery approach, which is incremental product delivery. In that case, a leverage, an approach called Scrum, where we can, I have worked with my team to plan an increment to ensure that 
what we plan is implemented or executed and ensure that my client or the stakeholder have the opportunity to review it and approve it before we deploy and release it to the customer. Simple as that. Now, there is no way you're going to say this to any interviewer and they are going to still be asking you about all the, no. Why? Because they understand that you understand the value of a Scrum Master. But if you say, oh, my gosh, Scrum Master is a facilitated event and remove impediments, and then they start asking you, okay, who, uh, what do you do? There is spring planning and all of that. But when you kind of give that, like, okay. Now, I've been in a um, couple of interviews, which were supposed to be like an hour, and after 20, 30 minutes, they say, okay, I think we already uh, have our feedback and we don't, we, we, we don't think we want to keep here for longer. Right. Now, it's not because I'm an expert, right? Which is the last thing I'm going to talk about today. Mastering the act of interviewing. Mastering the act of interviewing is very, very important. I have someone, he was supposed to go, she was supposed to go through a three-space interview after the first interview, they say, okay, look, we're ready for you if you're ready. Why? She mastered the act of interviewing. All right. So the third thing I want to talk about today is mastering your resume and LinkedIn. Now, if you're not getting interview at all, there's the, some of the common problems. It's not all, but a common problem. One of the problems most often is because your LinkedIn and your resume are conflicting. And second, uh, which is one of the top reasons is that your LinkedIn is not professional. Now, you have to understand that you are competing against hundreds of people. Now, if we cannot double verify your identity by you having an outstanding professional social media presence. Now, why is LinkedIn very important? Because it's your professional resume online. Everyone can see that. Which is why if you have a resume and it doesn't align to LinkedIn, you are missing out. Which is why if you're applying and you're not on LinkedIn, it's going to take the grace of God for you to stand out, right? So very important. Make sure you have a professional LinkedIn profile. And someone said, like, oh, I don't understand anything about LinkedIn. And look, okay, you can pay a professional to do that, right? For uh, or also support you do a LinkedIn. I don't do LinkedIn uh, stuff. I can do it, but I don't do it because that's a waste of my time. All right. You can pay someone who can do you something professional. Uh, okay. I know some people kind of just pay some random LinkedIn uh, stuff to go work on your, on your profile. Right. Now, the goal is to have someone that understand why you're going to understand leadership and in the professional space. Which is the reason why sometimes it's a bit difficult and a bit expensive. And sometimes when we tell people, oh, um, for instance, to get a one-on-one -on -one with me, which you're not kind of in my program, it's a $200 an hour, which is very cheap. Some people say, oh, this is expensive. Now, this is the reason why to get a professional on a short notice is very expensive. Why is that very expensive to get a professional within like, oh, I need to work one hour, two hours. Now, if I already have all I need and I need just something to close the gap, there is a lot I can get from a professional in one hour. Why? Because I'm asking just key questions that will close the gap. All right. I'm asking just key questions that will help close the gap. So with that, in less than an hour, I can be able to cover so much information that put me up there. So for that reason, professionals charge very high for those who want to get on their space just to steal knowledge. We call those who are coming for one-on-one. -on -one. You want to steal knowledge and go. Now, when you're part of the community, that cost is lower for you, right? Why is it lower for you? Because we are building you as ambassador to go tell what you've seen. So we're not only coaching you, but then we're also creating value that we bounce back to the community. 
All right, this is coaching. Now we're not talking about coaching today. Now, on your resume, what should you be paying very close attention on? The first mistake a lot of people do is that they put so much on your resume. Like if I take your resume and I'm trying to scroll down, it's like I'm struggling to even understand what you're reading because it's too crowded. One of the things you want to do is that you want to ensure that your resume has so much white space. Why is white space very important? Recruiters have less than 30 seconds to glance through your resume. Now, this is a sample of a resume right here, right? Now, you agree with me that the way this resume is designed, it stands out. I can easily pick out what I want to want just by going through. But if we, you don't have a sample like this, which is this is our master resume for everyone that is within our community, our master resume is a killer. That when we, we work on your resume, you go and you say, oh, I'm not having an interview. Uh, definitely going to tell you straightforward. The problem is not your resume. It's something else, not your resume. And most often, it might just be because uh, the position you're going for is too competitive. And sometimes it's not even any of like, it's, you're not even a problem. It's just that you've not had the chance for you to be selected. If you go online on LinkedIn or so, and you see a Scrum Master position was put up within one hour, you're going to see about 500 applications. So sometimes it takes, that's why you need now to leverage advanced strategy. What are advanced strategy? Ensuring that you are effectively leveraging LinkedIn, uh, creating frequent posts in there that can help you to stand out. So if you can do both of that, then you should be good to go. Now, the fourth thing on my list today, which I want to talk about, is about leveraging the power of case study. But when we talk about case study, what exactly do we mean about case study? For instance, if you put in your resume that you work uh, as a scrum master with uh, Bank of America, now the interviewer will be more interested to like, okay, can you tell me about your project with Bank of America? Now, when they're listening to you, they don't just want to hear you say, oh, we Bank of America, I was working with a team and we're building a mobile app and it was a team of these and I helped them facilitate. Now, when you do that, they're going to listen, but it's kind of pause. Okay. Now, when they talk about case study, this is where you build your confidence and this is where you separate yourself from the crowd. Now, Okay. I work with Bank of America and we were building a project using machine learning or we're building a project to enhance machine learning that can enable the company to effectively attract new clients. So this was an interface that had, had the power to be able to identify uh, can we say browser or can we say um, internet users or shopper based on their location and suggest suggest to offer them a credit card from Bank of America. One of the companies that has been very smart in using machine learning is uh, uh, Capital One, right? So I'm just giving a, an example. Now, if I'm talking about machine learning, that's a practical digital product that a company is trying to work on, right? You understand that when we talk about case study, case study simply means that you master that as Scrum Master, you're not hired to come be there for the company, you hire to facilitate a product delivering value. Now, not all Scrum Masters work on products. There are some Scrum Masters, they work only on data and they work, or they work only on ticket. For instance, you can work as a Scrum Master, uh, let's say still with Bank of America, and you're not working on any product. You're just having a whole lot of ticket or a whole lot of issues that are coming in as major backlog to your team. And what your team is doing is prioritizing these issues and troubleshooting them. Now, but that's a goal. If you're doing that, probably you are supporting the security department, you are supporting client delivery and all of that. So it's very important to understand that. And now when building your case study, one of the things you should pay very close attention is about correlation. 
We don't just want to say, oh, I work here, I work here. We're trying to look at correlation. One of the uh, interviewers, when one of the interviewers asked me like, okay, I see your bachelor, you were more in PU environmental science. I'm curious to understand what the transition or what transition or what kind of motivated you because I'm trying to see the uh, correlation, right? So all of that is taken into account. And I was able to tell them a story and like, oh, wow, that is interesting. Now, it, there's no limitation if maybe your background is not computer science or so. What people want to hear from you is you speak, right? That's why the resume cannot do it for you all. Power of case study, very important. And lastly, which is my masterpiece, is the act of interviewing. The act of interviewing is very, very important. Now, the first thing that kicked a lot of people out, 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 even before they start interviewing, is the posture. They have never been on camera except the day they want to interview. And then they get in there and they're, they're sitting like this and there's no movement. Okay, tell me about yourself. Okay, my name is Peter. I'm connecting from Indiana. Um, I have about seven years of so you're talking as if you're doubting yourself number one you're not familiar with the camera number two you're not talking as a leader now if you've observed the way i do my presentation i try to be as relaxed as much as possible for all my interviews i go to i go with a glass of water or I go with my cup of coffee now, I am not begging you to employ me. I am showcasing what I have to offer and we are looking for a win-win. So you don't have to be like, I'm in a begging position. Oh God, I need to get this interview. Oh, I need to. Then you already get in with a panic mode and you're like, okay, you, you're more like someone sitting in the back and that you've been interrogated. No, remember you are, if you're hired, you are going to be facilitating major events. You are going to be interacting with your top engineers. They want someone that can provide excellence. So your personality, you need to work on. In my community, on Sundays, we do leadership. Just how you think, how you talk, how you compact, it's very important. You can know Scrum from A to B, but because of the way you, your posture is, you're always talking and like, you're not too sure yourself, you're distracted. You need to learn posture. How do you use your hands when you're talking? How do you make sure that you gain confidence when you're talking? How do you express, right? When, when stuff, you, you can change the environment. You can just get in, not, okay. Also the act of interviewing, this is something a lot of people do, especially people that think they know too much. It's a no, no, no in leadership. Your interviewer is always right. It doesn't matter what they say. And they don't like when you interrupt them. Like, oh no, you know what? That's not what I was talking about. Let me kind of know you will realize that when they give you an opportunity to answer a question, except you're going like forever, 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 no one is going to stop you. Now, the act of interviewing is respecting space. Respect is very important. It's a very key value. Secondly, make sure that your responses are not above two minutes. Some people just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and they're not ending. It's like, okay, this one is going to come in and pull the daily stand up to 30 minutes. They said, no. Now you answer everything correctly, but because of the way you behave, right, you could not. You also need to master the facial, uh, what the emotional, the way your interviewer are talking, they are responding. You need to be able to read their tone. Now, there's some certain interviews, if you get to a point, you realize that it's a big mess, you can excuse yourself and get out of that space. It's not compulsory that you must sit to the end. If you get in and the people are very, very not nice, there are some interviewers, they are very, I don't know what, what it seems as if they put all the worst problem in their head and they want to pour that out to you. Now you have the power to say, okay, sorry. I was expecting a conversation, but it seems like this is more like uh, 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 
a court case. So I probably would not like to continue. If you don't mind, I'm going to um, leave. Politely, just leave. It's very okay. When someone is interviewing you, they don't have right over you, right? It, it's okay. It's more like relationship. Let's talk about relationship. You're asking someone out and then you want to, let's say, you really want it, right? And you want to do everything possible to make sure they like you, right? To, now, when you start doing that, what you're going to do is that you create what we call false impression. And even if that person say a yes, the reality set in and then you change and then people leave you and like, oh, I don't understand why people leave me. You need to train yourself to be natural. You need to, and the only way you can do that is to master what you do, is to invest in your learning, is to study, is to master the act is to invest in yourself, get into a community that pushes you, not a community that will go sit down and will do interviews and just answer questions and know where you can practice, which is exactly what we offer. Okay, so that was it for today. Couple of stuff, very important for you to do. I know sometimes you're expecting, oh, let's do question and answer, but trust me, this is gonna help you at both every question you will get out there. If you don't set the foundation right, you might put yourself in trouble and you keep on doing, going through the roller coaster sector. But then you can do it. I believe in you, even though you don't believe in yourself, just the fact that you have set up your mind to do it, you can do it. For people that have thought like, oh, this is too complicated. No, it's only complicated because you've not met the right people, right? Do good, invest in yourself, join a community of practice, make sure you're practicing, make sure that even if you're not getting the job, you're learning. There's so much, many opportunity coming up and you want to be part of the bigger change. Subscribe, share if this actually benefited you. Don't forget to leave a comment. I'll see you in my next video.